the absolute scariest and most dangerous fish on the planet is the piranha. Or at least that's what the movies will lead you to believe. We're talking about a fish that at a small size is scared of each other. It's scared of if the lights come on. It's scared of if I come over to the aquarium. It's scared if I feed them. Of course, this is only the case at a smaller size. As they get bigger, they become more bosterous and more comfortable in their aquariums and display a lot more beautifully. And that is why when I ordered these piranha in, originally I wanted to get fish that were four to five inches not four-fifths of an inch. So I was a little upset when we originally put them in a 120-gallon aquarium because these were tiny little fish. Nobody's going to get excited over that. But as a hobbyist, I secretly was. I loved watching all of their transitions and their behaviors and their personalities and how they interact with food and as well as each other as they grow over time. And I got to say, I have absolutely zero regrets. While some people didn't enjoy seeing tiny little fish that could pass as a tetra, I was absolutely fascinated with them. Today I want to give you an update on my Piranha Aquarium. Let's start with the initial layout. You guys will remember we originally went with some maple leaf rock as well as some lava rock with Anubius attached to it. We had then used some Malaysian driftwood or Malaysian wood in the aquarium and we kind of created this scheme where everything's focused on the center. Like almost like these two hands are coming together. <laughs> I mean, I get silly with some of these escapes. And I thought it just looked absolutely stunning. And the focus here was force the fish to be the main display in an aquarium where the scape really captivates you and is really different, really is interesting, yet it's incredibly basic. Bunch of rocks piled in the corners with wood sticking out and then I toss some Anubius on top of it. As simple as it is, it's absolutely phenomenal. At least in my opinion. With that said, the scape worked out perfectly. The piranha do spend most of their time in the open space, but because the rocks are piled up in a certain way, it does allow them, which they love to do, to scoot under it and hide from me <laughs> at all times. Even when I film videos in front of this, they don't like me waving my hands around, et cetera, et cetera, but over time, they're gonna get a little bit better. They have quadrupled in size, going from that tiny little size that they originally came into. Now they are the size that I was ordering them in at. They are now probably about four inches at least for the most part. We're going to get to diet here first and feeding them. And they've never eaten anything like this. So I'm interested to see if they actually will. This is just a smelt that I got from my local grocery store. I cut them up to be a little bit smaller, more manageable, because this is typically what the rays get. More in tune with their natural diet, is, which is the whole fish. When it comes to maintenance on this aquarium, I already showed you guys how I maintain the filters that we built. You know, basically taking out the sponge, rinsing that, doing my water change, replace the sponge. Very, very basic. Not a ton of work there. As for siphoning the bottom of the tank, I simply don't need to do it. Because I'm using such a fine sand and because this tank has proper flow within it, nothing really settles in the aquarium. Of course, it could potentially be behind the rocks and whatnot, but I'm not concerned with that. Uh, let there be uneaten food or detritus or fish waste or whatever the case might be. We have real wood in here, which is decaying over time and it contributes to it. One of the things that I didn't like at first was how many tannins are being released into the water from the wood. This wood has been submerged for like four years and it still releases tannins. I like it. It adds to the mystique of this aquarium. We're just using common household light bulbs. These are LED bulbs. I showed you guys how I built these. Uh, we have an 11 watt, an 11 watt, and a 7 watt. 7 watt throughout the middle to make it a little bit more dim while the 11 watts are lighting the Anubius, which are doing fantastic. However, we do have a couple of little algae issues, which I don't mind. We have a little bit of hair algae that I'm seeing if it's gonna get any better or worse, or if this is gonna be an ongoing issue, if I need to, it's just appeared and then it didn't really grow or spread. I do have one piece with a, a little bit of uh, beard algae. I don't care about that stuff, so long as it doesn't take over the aquarium. In my next 
um, water change, I'm going to go in with a siphon and siphon out as much as I can and see if it comes back. But I think that we just had a bit of a spike in nutrients because typically these guys eat my beef heart recipe and I'm slowly getting all my fish over to that beef heart. Um, I snap off a piece, uh, I defrost it until it's like wiggly, almost like a gelatin, toss it in the tank and these guys can taste it immediately. Uh, I'm trying to train them to get them to the point where I only reach into the tank in one location and when I do that means food and if I do it in any other location that means my hands are in there don't bite me but overall this scape is absolutely stunning it's definitely one of my favorite aquariums out here in the aquarium gallery and I say that all the time but it really is it's so simple it's so easy I think it showcases the piranha in like a dangerous mysterious way but ultimately these guys can be relatively Kind of boring i guess because they're not all that colorful uh they're not that aggressive they're not that active i mean they're most active when the lights are off and they just kind of occupy the remainder of the aquarium um you know if i'm lucky i might see 10 of them there's more than double that in here but a lot of times they'll hide but they're all growing they're all doing absolutely fantastic we just got to give this tank more and more time to mature once we'll make a video a year from now and this tank is going to be night and day yeah, they just all hide under the rocks and stare at me. <laughs> One of the things that I do, and I'm just noticing it now, I got a flashlight back here. So if there is a big chunk of uneaten food, I just go throughout the tank and I look for it. The other day, there was a big chunk behind here. And uh, all I did was I put my hand in, took out a couple rocks, the piranha went to this side, removed the food, because too much uh, uneaten food is simply too much. Now I'm curious if they'll eat this or if they'll even consider it okay we're gonna drop in a piece that actually has a tail again I put it in this corner and I chuck it into the uh, the flow of the water so it kind of flows throughout the tank simulating something live so they might go after it they're all hiding right now so Lord knows if they're even gonna eat it but that's what happens when I try to make a video and the lights are on and not a lot of fish oh it's just gonna sink to the bottom there's that chunk of fish right there give it a few minutes for them to taste it in the water Look, the tannins make the water look red. So it's almost like this is a bloody tank in the first place. Oh, there they go. One's curious. As soon as one is, the pack will begin. Yeah, there you go. Again, kind of boring. <laughs> I'm just happy they're eating. Oh, wow, they really like that. That's fantastic, because a lot of my other fish won't eat those. And it's gone. I think four or five of them got it. That's how fast it happens. Absolutely awesome give them another one that's the piranha tank for now guys there's not a ton to update on this um, but many of you guys have been wondering how's the piranha doing how's the piranha doing how's the piranha doing um, and there's just they're growing everybody's doing fine I've set these tanks up so there's not a ton of maintenance but other than that the fish are growing everybody's doing fantastic they're cornering it Yeah, so the final question has got to be, is that it? Kind of boring. I mean, just a bunch of little tiny piranha and a big old tank. Obviously, these guys are going to grow to uh, be a lot bigger. And I believe we got like 20 in there now or something like that. Um, we'll dwindle those numbers to the best 12 or the best 8 uh, once they get to the 6 to 8 inch mark. Because these guys can grow into about a foot uh, long. And once we get them up in size, I plan to add in some dither fish. And this tank will transform into something absolutely incredibly beautiful. It'll be night and day. Won't the piranha eat smaller fish? I mean, there's the risk of it, but for the most part, the piranha don't view tiny little neon tetras as food when they're at a bigger size. When they're at this size, they most certainly will and will eat them because they are worth the effort. They're worth chasing after them and, and, and putting out that energy because they are going to get a big mouthful. But when they're a lot bigger, they're not going to chase after tiny little fish. This is very well known for piranhas that you can actually keep them with a bunch of tetras and make it absolutely beautiful. And I personally can't wait for that. So stick around because this aquarium's not done. And I probably won't get a chance to tell you tomorrow, but happy holidays.